Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's so hot today. It's like the hottest day of the year. I'm completely boiling. It's sunny outside. I have windows closed because otherwise you'll hear everything. So I thought I'd bring you my June book haul today. For once, it's really small. It's really concise, straight to the point. Not too much to babble about. So let's jump right in. First up, I have Heathen by Natasha Alterici and Rachel Deering. I thought this was volume one when I was buying it. It turns up it's volume two. <laughs> I will have to find volume one now. It's apparently a really cool Viking inspired graphic novel. So it's all about our main character, Adis, and she is basically trying to revenge her village and the gods and recruit some cool people. I think I'll be reading closer to the release date of Assassin's Creed Ragnarok, which is based all about Vikings. So yeah, I'm really excited. It looks really, really cool. The art style is very black and white, but quite, quite cool. Next up, I sort of requested it from the publisher. The publisher sent me the Stormblood by Jeremy Zal. It's a debut military sci-fi. I don't think I ever read military sci-fi before. I didn't know this was a military sci-fi when I requested it, to be honest, but you know, it's all about this guy who has been injected with loads of like alien DNA and he be has become really strong and really powerful and now he has to go on a little mission, I think, against his other similar soldier people and it just, it's a space opera, it's sci-fi, it's something that I'm like, mm. I wasn't very into like military stuff ever really, but I'm really excited to give this a go. It is really, really new release. I think it just came out, I think this month. So check it out if you want to. I have been craving this particular set after seeing it in one of the videos. I don't know who I watched it at this point. It's been someone a long time ago. I picked up the R1 IQ84. I don't know how you actually pronounce it. Is it like it's an homage to 1984 by George Orwell? This is by Haruki Murakami. This is a beautiful set. I even haven't taken it out of the plastic yet. I don't know what I'm doing. It's such a cool set. It's just three books. I think it usually comes as like a one book. All I know about the story, I've read a couple of Murakami books. They're usually quite a little bit weird, a little bit quirky. And this one in particular, we have a main character who is in contact with this other person but it, like they are in like a different dimension and like their decisions impact each other and then they try to figure out how to get in contact and there's a lot of homage to 1984 from what I've heard obviously the title and I love 1984 it's too close to heart especially at this time but I've heard this is just one of the stunning stunning books the one thing is I feel like there's a, a debate in the literary community where is it is it outdated now to read Murakami? Should you be moving on to other uh, Japanese authors who are a bit less known but provide just as much value as Murakami? Question. But I'm very very excited to pick it up at some point in my life. <laughs> Next up, uh, this came out of nowhere. Adrian Tchaikovsky Firewalkers. Apparently it's like a novella style all about climate change and how this world has these people. I totally just almost ripped my book. All these people who are called firewalkers, they are the ones who repair damage to the protective stuff that safeguards this world. They are expendable, they are brave and they are resourceful. So it's also one of the 1,250 copies that are signed. It seems like a really quick read and I'll pick up anything that he writes at this point. So he can do me no wrong. And I heard actually really good things about this. So I mentioned this in my mid-year book freakout tag, Seven Deadly Shadows by Courtney Alameda and Valin E. Maitani. I still can't pronounce the author's names, but I read a bit more about this and it just sounds so good. This is a Japanese inspired fantasy talks about a girl who's bullied, she's an underdog and then her family's sacred shrine gets attacked one day and then she has to basically go on this journey to revenge this horrible thing that's happened and she recruits, sort of recruits, these Shinigami who are the death gods in Japanese 
culture and some of them are might not be the people like the good people that we think they are well they're not people but you know like the good characters so it's just it's I th it looks like a really quick read which just it sounds so so exciting when i'll pick it up it's a different question like let's not ask me that but yeah it's in my hands now also mentioned in my midi wrap up the laurie m lee's forest of souls also some sort of like asian japanese inspired fantasy all about a girl who whose best friend gets killed and she suddenly can revive him and she's just like freaked out doesn't know what to do so she has to basically figure out how to yield her powers and what to do next and try not to get dragged by the spider king to this forest of souls it's so, such a such a, an interesting concept i'm really really looking forward to this and actually i pre-ordered this book and the author was actually running a pre-order campaign for this book so i got some goodies from her directly she sent a signed plate for the book got an exclusive bookmark and also the most stunning metal bookmark i hope it doesn't like reflect i might just even take it out of the plastic look at that mine got damaged a bit <laughs> but it's still so gorgeous and also some of the character cards i think i'm missing one i might have just dropped one but yeah I'm really really excited to read it. It's really fun that authors do that and you know it's I guess it's maybe like a selling tactic like oh if you order this book I'll send you some goodies but us bookworms uh, you know we like our goodies. Two more books to go what is happening? This is The House of Dragons by Jessica Clues. She apparently wrote The Shadow of Bright and Burning series which I do have but I never read. I obviously bought it on recommendation by all the YouTubers that absolutely love that series so one day I'll read that but obviously I had to pick up a book about dragons, classic. This were very much reminiscent of the Game of Thrones, haven't read it but watched the show. So you have five houses who are all battling for the throne and usually in this world the, so the emperor dies and the next one in line is the oldest person in one of these houses who takes over. But in this case some sort of outlaws are actually battling for the throne and it's it sounds very very interesting i just want to see how it's gonna work out because it's, it's a chunky book you know and it says who will win we'll find out it has a really nice font you know if anyone wonders apparently my colleagues made fun of me the other day they're like are you one of those old ladies who you know like if if the font isn't right you won't read it yes maybe i'm a font snob this has a really nice font i'm just gonna show you like a page and last, but definitely not least, the last, as far as I'm aware, book in the S.A. Chakraborty's Diver Bard, I hope that's how you pronounce it, series, The Empire of Gold. This oh, a beast of 763 pages. It feels like it. It's heavy. This is a conclusion, as far as I'm aware, again, to one of my favorite favorite political fantasies. So the first one is City of Brass, the second one is Kingdom of Copper and the Empire of Gold. So in the first book our main character Nari, she is kind of, she lives in a world where they tell stories about magic and how it used to be and she doesn't really believe it, you know, it's all stories, it's all fairy tales and then suddenly she summons a djinn and realizes that actually everything she's been hearing all her life is true and she has a bigger connection to it than she realizes so we follow her story throughout this whole series how she ends up in the city of brass and all the politics around it is such a great written series i highly highly recommend this i am I'm kind of tempted to reread the other two just to kind of feel back in the same universe and then finish this up. It's it's just it's such a such a phenomenal storytelling and it's really reminiscent if you enjoyed Robert Jackson Bennett's Foundry Side, you know, you'll enjoy that kind of cuz she's a bit of a like a thief, a little bit of like a masterful deceit master. <laughs> yeah, highly recommend this. And I guess that concludes my book haul. This month has been weird. It meant returning back to work. It meant summer is here. It meant it's just I feel like I'm perpetually tired again. 
but also The Last of Us 2 came out, so I've been playing that. So check out the links in the description for my Twitch, for my live streams, and I'm trying to upload them to YouTube, but it's taking like an extra time because the processing and stuff, it's just a bit confusing to me. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you feel like, free world. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!